sorting, filters and limits. Next up, we are going to have a look at the sorting, the different filters and some of the limits that can be used and set up to customize the warehouse order creation rules to the way we want them to be. And the first part is obviously the sorting profile. Because, as we already learned, this is basically the first attribute that is used in the warehouse order creation process. So let us have a look. Definition of sorting rules. The sorting profile is in charge of sorting the separate warehouse tasks that are supposed to be bundled to warehouse orders. Each sorting profile can contain a list of up to 15 sorting fields we can use for bringing our warehouse tasks in a specific order. And in order to understand how that looks like, let us have a look at the following schematic presentation. In this example, we can see the definition of two different sorting profiles. One is called CONS for Consolidation Group and the other one is called PIPA for Picking Path. And to each of those sorting rules, different sorting fields are applied. Like for example, we could sort the CONS profile by the consolidation group first. And within each consolidation group, we want the warehouse tasks to be sorted by the storage bin sorting sequence. Or maybe the profile PIPA is only going to sort the warehouse tasks by the respective storage bin sorting sequence. As we already mentioned, we can set up a sorting that contains up to 15 separate sorting fields. And on top of that, we also have the option to sort either ascending or descending for each sorting field. The standard approach of the EWM system is to do an ascending sorting. But with setting the flag for the descending sorting, we could for example customize to start with the highest weight first before we are going to go to the lightweight products within the warehouse tasks. And this is the general approach of how the sorting profile is set up. Item and subtotal filters. After we had a look at the basic sorting of the warehouse tasks that are supposed to be bundled to warehouse orders, we are now going to check out the item and subtotal filters for the warehouse order creation in SAP EWM. And to make this topic more tangible, let us paint a little schematic picture again, so we gain a better understanding of what those filters really do. So let us have a look. Some parameter filters we can use. The minimum or maximum number of items per subtotal. Meaning, we want to have a minimum or maximum number of items within the warehouse order. A minimum to maximum volume. Meaning, we want a specific volume based range within the warehouse orders. A minimum to maximum weight. That's basically the same approach as with the volume. Just this time, it is about the weight of the products. Complete handling unit. This basically means we can force the system to do a full pallet withdrawal, for example. Extract and process time. These options allow us to set a range for the processing time of the warehouse order. If we set these options, the EWM system will prevent creating a warehouse order that is going to take too much time to process it, for example. And of course, we need to set the attribute if the customized filter is to be used on item or on subtotal level. And that is it on what attributes we can use for creating filters either on item or on subtotal level. 
limit values. And next up, we got the limit values. With this limit values, we can provide presets for the actual size and amount of a warehouse order, which basically results in limiting the number of warehouse tasks within a warehouse order in the EWM system. As soon as one of those limits is exceeded, the actual creation of the current warehouse order is finished with all warehouse tasks that were part of the creation up to the one that exceeded the limits. Of course, for the remaining warehouse tasks that didn't make it into the warehouse order, a new warehouse order creation is executed and the logic repeats itself. Order-wise, the EWM system will first go for the maximum values we customized before going on to the minimum settings. If it is not possible for the EWM system to use the actual warehouse order creation rule, the EWM system is going to search for another creation rule from the warehouse order creation rule search sequence we customized for each activity area. As an example, this could happen if the current warehouse order creation rule is set to a limit with a minimum of 10 kg weight, for example. But maybe we only want to pick one item that is relatively lightweight. This rule cannot work, because the creation will always exceed the minimum value. And now let us have a look at what some of those limit values are. We can customize a minimum or maximum number of items per warehouse order. We can set a minimum or maximum volume for example, meaning we do not want to pick a too high volume in one turn, because maybe the user cannot carry all the goods if the volume is too high. We can set a minimum or maximum weight. Basically the same approach as with a volume, just this time for the total weight of all warehouse tasks within the warehouse order. We can also limit the extract time. As we already had it before with this topic, when we were talking about the filters, we can not only filter warehouse tasks with the settings, we can also use them as limits, as we do not want the user to use too much time on completing just one warehouse order. And of course, we need to tell the system if the current limit is to be used for warehouse tasks or for physical inventory documents. And that is it on the limit values. And let us now check out the next profile. Packing profile. With a packing profile, the EWM system can determine picking handling units within the warehouse order creation. The system will take the warehouse task data into consideration, like for example the weight, the volume or the dimensions of the products we need to pick. This data is compared to the different available packaging materials and the number and type of the needed handling units is determined. The packing profile contains the following fields. Minimum to maximum number of items per warehouse order. A warehouse task split option. Setting this option allows the EWM system to split warehouse tasks so the packaging materials are filled more optimal. An example could be that the initial warehouse task creation created a stock removal task for 5 pieces. According to the packing profile, the EWM system determines that we could put 2 of those 5 pieces into an already calculated handling unit. If we now allow a warehouse task split, the EWM system will reduce the quantity of the existing warehouse task to two pieces and create another one for the remaining quantity. Create handling unit option. With this option, 
we can set up an automatic handling unit creation along with a warehouse order creation. If this option is not set, the EWM will suggest the calculated handling units, but not create them automatically. Skip warehouse task option. Setting this option will allow the EWM to skip warehouse tasks in the already sorted list of warehouse tasks. This can occur if a warehouse task does not fit the picking handling unit and the EWM system will go on with the next warehouse task in the sorted list. A sorting option and the packing mode. This option allows us to define what kind of packing mode we want to use. We have the option to leave it at blank, we can set it to a complex algorithm or we can set it to a simple algorithm. With using the simple algorithm, we can only use one packaging specification with just one packaging material, for example. Now we went through the different profiles and limits we can use for creating warehouse orders within the warehouse order creation rules. But of course, we need to define how the now fully customized warehouse order creation rule is determined by the EWM system. And that is exactly what we are going to do next.